coming up in this episode. Since Griffith was the play's star, Knotts knew who Griffith was. After rehearsing for a while and during a break, Griffith asked Knotts, Excuse me, but are you Windy Wales? Knotts was stunned and amused that Griffith had any knowledge of the program, much less who Windy Wales was. Thanks for stopping by. I did not know that classic TV edition. Please like and subscribe. I'll think about it. That's all I ask. Hi, everyone. Do you need a laugh and enjoy funny memes and videos? Check out my brand new channel, Freshly Baked Memes and Other Stuff. Just click on the link below. Now, on with the show. Andy Griffith and Don Knotts formed one of the most popular comedy teams in the 20th century. What made them so different from other comedy teams was that it was formed during the filming of a television show. How Knotts and Griffith ended up together and then became a beloved comedy team was unusual and a one in a million shot. Back in the 1950s, Don Knotts was really struggling. He found bit parts on TV shows and at one point was even in a soap opera as a mentally impaired janitor for a while. He did have a regular role on a radio show called Bobby Benson and the B Bar B Riders as the voice of the old geezer Wendy Wales. Knotts did his best Gabby Hayes impression as Wales. Here's a clip from the show. Meanwhile, down on the B Bar B, one of the ranch hands, yes, you guessed it, Wendy Wales is off on one of his incredible flights of fancy. Yes, sir, e. Windjammer Whales, they used to call me. Back in the days when I hunted whales up near the Arctic, I doggone it Now, all... wait a minute, Windy. Are you trying to tell us that you were a whale fisherman? Hey, didn't I never tell you about that, little boss? Now, how could I ever have forgot? <laughs> Why, sure. I caught me so many of them darn critters, they used to call me Whale Killer Whales. <laughs> oh, Windy. A killer of whales, is it now? And is that how come you spout off all the time? Now, you listen here, Irish. I ain't gonna... Hey, hold on, you two. Knotts did bit parts in a lot of TV shows like The Bob Cummings Show and other comedies. The first thing is to put your robe back on. He finally found some steady work on the Steve Allen Plymouth Show, often as a nervous man in Allen's Man on the Street interviews. One problem was the show was shot before a live audience and Knotts often had to overcome terrible stage fright to do his part. Andy Griffith became known to the public in the early 50s when he had a comedy hit record called What It Was Was Football. He told a story from the point of view of a simple country preacher trying to explain what was going on in a football game. In 1955, he appeared in a one-hour TV special as Will Stockdale in No Time for Sergeants. The character of Stockdale was much like Gomer Pyle and in fact later served as the inspiration for the TV series. He again played Stockdale in a movie and finally in a Broadway play. In 1957, he also played the devious and egomaniacal role of Lonesome Rhodes in the film A Face in the Crowd. It was a big departure from what he'd done previously and showed his acting could also include doing drama. But it was during the time he was preparing for one of the productions of No Time for Sergeants that he first met Knotts. Knotts had a small comedic part as a corporal who examined Stockdale's cognitive abilities. Since Griffith was the play's star, Knotts knew who Griffith was. After rehearsing for a while and during a break, Griffith asked Knotts, Excuse me, but are you Windy Wales? Knotts was stunned and amused that Griffith had any knowledge of the program, much less who Windy Wales was. It turned out that Griffith was a regular listener to the Bobby Benson radio show during his long hours on the road. From that moment, they hit it off and became great friends and spent hours playing Mumbly Pig, an old schoolyard game that involves throwing a pocket knife as close as you can to your own foot. If you stick your own foot, you win, but few choose that option. But what they also noticed was as they rehearsed their scene together, a kind of magic occurred. Griffith said, it's either there or not there, and it was there. Soon, they included their spouses with their get-togethers. When the production ended, the two drifted away and lost touch. Andy was approached by director Sheldon Leonard about doing a TV show with a Southern character that would appeal to country folk. 
You probably recognize him as Nick the bartender on It's a Wonderful Life. After a few meetings, they decided that Griffith should play a sheriff named Andy Taylor. They decided to introduce Andy and the new show during an episode of Make Room for Daddy starring Danny Thomas. In this episode, Thomas and his family were pulled over by Sheriff Taylor because he ran a stop sign. The pilot episode poked fun at small town sheriffs and speed traps. At this time, Don Knotts was appearing in the Steve Allen show, but he'd learned that it was going to be canceled and that he'd soon be unemployed again. Knotts watched the episode that Griffith was in on the night it aired. The next day, he called his old friend and said, Hey, listen, do you think Andy Taylor ought to have a deputy? Andy loved the idea. He always found Knotts hilarious. But it had to go through Sheldon Leonard. So Knotts came in and pitched the idea of a deputy for Andy. And the deputy would have the mentality of a nine-year-old child. Leonard listened and said he'd get back to him. Three long weeks later, Leonard told him he could play the deputy. What he didn't say was that, in his mind, the plan was only for one episode. That, of course, soon changed when everyone saw the chemistry that Knotts and Griffith had together. It was soon apparent that Knotts was the one who would supply most of the comedic laughs and that a straight man was needed. To Griffith's credit, he decided to become the straight man to Barney Fife's character. If you're a fan of the series, you'll notice how the character of Andy Taylor changed in that first season. He went from being a bit of a loud hayseed to one who had to be the adult in the room. The one who tried to talk sense into Barney and others, the person who tried to stop the chaos that would go on in the show. It was a selfless act, one that often took the spotlight away from his character of Andy Taylor. The chemistry that came out of this decision propelled Griffith and Knotts to incredible heights. It made them in the show an instant hit and America's favorite comedy team. Knotts won five Emmys for his performance as Barney Fife. Francis Bavier won an Emmy. Sadly, Griffith never won one Emmy for his portrayal of Andy Taylor. In fact, he was never even nominated. And it was a painful topic for him. But in 1996, he won a Grammy for his gospel album, and he said, I've never won anything before. When Knotts had signed a contract for The Andy Griffith Show, he was told the show would end after its fifth year. So as that fifth year neared, he began to look for opportunities. Universal Studios offered him a five-picture deal, and Knotts verbally agreed to it. When he told Griffith, Andy said that he'd now decided to continue shooting the TV show, and that he hoped that Knotts would stay on. But Knotts said he had given his word to Universal and would have to leave the show. It was a situation that could have ended very badly, but it didn't. The two men were able to remain friends, and in fact, when the production of Knott's first film, The Ghost and Mr. Chicken, began, it looked like it was going to be a disaster. The first person Knott's called was Andy, and like the true friend he was, he jumped right in, and he spent two weeks in the basement of Universal Studios rewriting the script for the film. Over the coming years, because of their close friendship, Knotts returned five different times to reprise his role as Barney on the show, and Griffith and Knotts would occasionally do comedy specials together. At one time, Knotts expressed his desire to become an official comedy team with Griffith, like Laurel and Hardy or Abbott and Costello, and maybe do some films together. But Griffith was against it. He brought up the team of Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis, and how being a recognized comedy team could destroy their friendship. He said he didn't want that to happen between he and Don because he so valued their relationship. Wouldn't it be nice if we all had a friendship like Andy Griffith and Don Knotts did? Thanks for stopping by where we sit back and reminisce a little bit about those classic television shows. See you next time.